Another Rooster Teeth update for you guys. Grey Haddock released a statement earlier today on Twitter acknowledging, well, I don't entirely know what all he's acknowledging in the statement because I haven't read it yet. I'm going to read it for the first time here with you guys. A heads up, it is two pages and it's quite long-winded. And he used, I think, notepad to type it out. So it's kind of hard to read. I'm not even going to show it on my screen. I'm just going to read it. You wouldn't really be able to see the text on my video anyways. So what I will do, however, I'm going to leave an archive link in the description where you can take a look at the text if you want to follow along or read it on your own time. You're more than welcome to. But I suggest for you to kind of just sit tight right now and chill and let me read this for you. Or maybe put it on in the background as you're working on something or maybe you're commuting and you're listening to this in the car or something. That's a good strategy for this video. And to be fair, probably for a lot of the videos on this channel. Uh, but I like it. I like having things as an audio experience that lets you free up. Uh, well, you guys know what I mean. You can multitask and stuff like that. Anyways, let's take a look at what Gray has to say. I will... Uh, I'm not going to... Uh, I, I could do this two different ways. I could read the entire thing and then go back and comment on specific points. However, this is such a long-winded document that I think I'm only going to read through it once and I'll pause and comment on it as we read it together. Because if I read it all and then try to go back, I'm going to kind of forget where I left off on places. So let's just take it as it comes. Uh, <laughs> anyways, he writes, Usually when someone wants to cast me as a villain, I'm shown a script or some art first. Hold for laugh. I've seen some really wild stuff go by the last many days, and I've held back for any number of reasons, from basic PR wisdom of not giving a platform to trolls or clickbait to not wanting to engage simply out of respect for the company-wide layoffs. Let me stop right here before we continue any further. I will probably have a lot of criticism for Gray as we read this, but I'm actually going to help him out a little bit before we do that. I've seen some of the Rooster Teeth fanatics acting like Gray is the only issue with Rooster Teeth right now. They're putting all the blame on Gray for the numerous, numerous, numerous issues at Rooster Teeth. Some of those fanatics are trying to put that all on gray and gray if somehow you're watching this video i will definitely stand up for you on that note i don't think it's fair at all for this all to be put on you i think there were many mistakes made by many people at rooster teeth uh and i think it's absurd that some of these people are trying to put all of this on you that's absolutely not okay in my book uh so let me just start by mentioning that okay now that said as i mentioned i'll probably have Plenty of criticism as we go through this, so don't get the wrong idea. But I'll call it as I see it, and I definitely don't think it's fair that those people are putting all the blame on you. Moving on. He writes, uh, But then the more erogious stuff goes by that will impact many other people if left on check, and you have to step in. A lot of people have simply been asking sincere if panicked questions, and we'll get to that in a second. Also, some 4chan jokers and even the occasional anonymous Saurus have piled on. As for the more sensational, sensationalist tweets, clickbait vids, gotcha docs, etc., I've yet to see anything that is correct, and a lot of it is genuinely backwards compared to what the reality was. Okay, let's comment on that. I can't speak for everybody out there. I don't know what all content people are putting out there regarding Grey and Rooster Teeth. There is a very specific reason why I haven't made my information on Grey public. I came forward with a theory and explained why it's possible, but at the end of the day, not factual, a theory. Turns out that theory was right. To an extent, let me add that. It was right to an extent. We don't know the specifics about what happened behind the scenes and when it occurred, but clearly that theory was way more correct than not correct, if not entirely correct. Anyways, I just wanted to make that clear distinction because as I said, I don't know what other creators out there are putting out there. But there is a very specific reason why I take so much caution with what I'm reporting on and how I present it. Uh, going back to his write-up here, it reads, There's no purpose in doing a point-by-point -point takedown of everything that is so wrong with the content of this stuff. A lot of it goes away with common sense. And if I were in a position to do anything like publish my calendar, show you production budgets, clear up what company or executive called for what campaign or action, the remaining gotchas would evaporate. But people are either opportunistic, in denial, or, and this is the complicated thing, in legit pain and confusion, as they're never allowed the additional business context that would poke a hole in their thinking. 
in general, yeah, people really wish they could pin their woes on a villain in times like these. I get it. In no way am I saying I'm perfect either. In the eight years, I went to the wall for the company. I apologize for the mistakes I could and at least tried to learn in hindsight. So again, like I said in the beginning, this should not be all, all the blame should not be put on Gray. And I do see Rooster Teeth fanatics are doing that. Some of them, some of them are acting like all the problems with Rooster Teeth are on Gray. Gray's the sole person here responsible. He's the villain. Now, you know, I'm going to criticize him a little bit. It's not that helpful for you to tell us that you're basically innocent of these claims without actually providing us with information that would prove that to be the case. And I understand that you can't release some of that stuff. You can't disclose it, but then maybe you shouldn't even acknowledge it. It's not going to do you any good to say, well, I could disprove this, but I can't disprove it because I can't disclose this. That doesn't really help anyone. So let's continue on. He writes, the first three years at the company, I was a contractor dismissed immediately upon wrap of each project. My brand new wife got to see me two to three nights a week because we slept at the office to get the job done. Public records, see podcasts. It's a little ridiculous to say I'm not sensitized to that sort of phenomenon. It's pretty much all I can say about it. Uh, that's definitely not a good look in my opinion. I, if Maybe I'm taking this the wrong way, but it sounds to me like he is trying to imply this sort of take. Oh, the crunch time allegations aren't that big of a deal. I also had to be uncomfortable at the workplace here and there. That's kind of what I'm getting out of that one. I would say that was very poorly worded as well. Continuing, he writes, The more genuine questions revolve around whether you should read into the layoffs or my departure as changing the chances of any one given show or if an animated show caused the layoffs. Is he hinting at Genlock here? He continues, In between the usual knee-jerk stuff, there was at least one pleasantly astute discussion about general business rhythms and mergers and acquisitions in the main subreddit. Oh my God. This is very embarrassing now, Gray. Are you really citing that joke of a post? The guy who's comparing the <laughs> Gray, please. Oh my gosh, man. I really was trying to give you a little bit of help here. Uh, and now, of course, as I mentioned, I was not going to not criticize you either, but this is such a bad look. That post was such a joke. The dude claims to be an HR professional and then goes to compare rooster teeth with 500 or so employees, 400, 500 employees or so estimates uh, state to major biotech companies, which easily have 10,000. If you look at Pfizer, you have over 100,000 employees. It was the most ridiculous comparison I've ever seen. That post was so ridiculous. It was full of damage control. And the logic there was, it was just missing logic. And the guy was acting like he was so knowledgeable because he has a degree, a degree in HR. My gosh, that post was a joke, Gray. You really, you really are trying to get people to go over there and believe that. I'm sorry, man, but you're making me more and more skeptical. We're not even halfway through this though. Let's continue. He writes, there's a really good amount of what we built together in Anim, I think maybe animation in Anim, that's intact. A lot of talented, skilled people are still there, caught in the middle of an awkward as heck situation. That I agree with. I do agree with that take. Uh, I do feel bad, as I've stated in video after video, feel bad for the people that are caught up in this in the middle, just trying to get the job done. I feel for those people. He says, and I feel that panic or speculation about a show or department's chances during this time does them a disservice. There's no need to assume that the departure of any one given person somehow massively alters that team's chances to do great things, much as no one person is a company-wide culture. I know they will continue to do their best, much as I did mine, within their given confines and pressures. All right, I'll at least say that was at least a nice part of the document uh, where you more or less wish the best for the remaining people. That's nice. Okay, moving on. He writes... For the same business and legal reasons, you don't get any context or details accompanying negative headlines out of any given company. You sadly also don't hear a lot about, uh, excuse me, you don't hear about a lot of good stuff that is also deeply under the hood. Weird, but true. And of course, I'm talking hypothetically here. You're simply not going to hear about the history of positive changes. What team has actually been perfectly fine for how long or what remedies one department offered when an outside department confused employees or what improvements were put into place when because any such statement would acknowledge the company had a challenge it wanted to work on in the first place. So a company might say nothing, which is a shame, but just because any given company or corporate chain might opt to black box all that information, it does not mean positive things have not happened and it definitely would not be in a troll's interest to mention of anything positive. Bottom line, there are still good people there trying to do good work and that must be respected. So... 
Uh, I mean, I agree with that last sentence for sure. I've stated that in multiple videos, even, you know, before this one. So clearly I agree with that if I've even mentioned that same point before even reading his statement here. I agree with that. However, the rest of that part, that segment there, doesn't sit too well with me. It kind of reads like, you know, I did a lot of good for the company, even if you don't see it. Now that said, I think we can make reasonable assumptions on these things. You know, if Genlock actually was very successful and Rooster Teeth was more transparent about it being successful, I think Gray wouldn't be getting as much slack. And actually, the next segment I see is talking about Genlock. Let's move into that. He writes, regarding Genlock specifically, its chances, impact on broader things, etc., I point you to publicly available statements and stats. It's been said several times that the show will launch and relaunch on multiple platforms multiple times through the year. Speculation when you don't have data is silly at best. Not really. Not at all. It's not silly at best. It's interesting at best. It's interesting. There's nothing wrong with speculating as long as you acknowledge that it's that speculation and you take into account how much of the speculation is really speculation and how much of it's hard data, the merit that whatever you're speculating on is based on how much merit there is and that sort of thing. I mean, some speculation can be so close to accurate. You saw what happened with my video, Gray, my little theory video, my little, you want to say speculation video, we can call it that. My speculation video two months ago about you no longer being with Rooster Teeth ended up quite accurate, it seems. Would you really say that such a thing is silly at best? I don't think so. I think it was good reporting, but you're welcome to your opinion. Continuing on, he writes, Now that some real indicators are starting to hit, maybe take a look at how it had been doing on Cartoon Network. I actually already have, and I mentioned that in a video. It showed that it did surprisingly well on Cartoon Network. I'll give it that. Um, that doesn't say too much, though. He writes, It was consistently the number two animated show behind Dragon Ball Super for all all of Saturday Cable in its first six weeks, and Episode 6 broke into the top 10 Saturday Cable shows of any kind against college football, no less. This is not meaningless, nor unnoticed, thanks to anyone who's been supporting it there. No, I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. It's, it did better than I expected, uh, but, you know, maybe some people just left the TV on. I don't know. It's hard to read into that stuff. Uh, uh, you know what? I'm not going to I'm not gonna give him too much of a hard time on that. I'll leave it at this. Genlock did perform on Cartoon Network better than I expected. I'll give it that. Moving on. He writes, I'm happy to work with Rooster Teeth as an independent creative, much as other folk continue to do, because I was upset with some company strategy and messaging went. As this is part of the personal career history, I feel comfortable sharing that I had a conversation with executive back at the beginning of 2018 as an animation started on Genlock, in which we agreed it was nearing the time for us to decide if I let go operational duties, excuse me, and focus strictly on creative, my preference, or vice versa. In quarter two of 2018, I was granted the three full-time headcount needed to begin offloading the bulk of my managerial duties with all that stat implies. I transferred supervising producer duties, i.e. hands-on logistics management, for all shows. And you can spot check that I stopped being credited as such on Ruby Volume 6, Ruby, uh, RVB 17, excuse me, Genlock, etc. I hired a second person to handle all the department budgets and accounting responsibilities beneath a certain financial threshold. I don't know what you're getting out here, man. Why are you telling us all this? He continues, Lastly, I created a department coordinator position for offloading all broader studio and facilities efforts. That's how we rolled last year. I did, however, have strategic oversight, which is why I ultimately still took responsibility for absolutely anything that may have happened specifically inside Anim. I think that's, again, animation department, while on my watch, and have expressed that previously to the crew. At the end of May 2019, we discussed the completion of my transition out of remaining strategic duties. Hold up a second. At the end of May 2019, we discussed the completion of my transition out of remaining strategic duties, and the company offered the title of creative director with emphasis on animation. June was June, and now I'll be doing my creative work as an independent. Yes, that can certainly include work for Rooster Teeth. That last segment is quite interesting. Gray, bring some information to the public light that wasn't really public before. I can't comment too much on that, but I will say some of what he wrote in that last segment might corroborate with information I'm told from very reliable sources. That's all I can really say on that note. Gray finishes it off by writing, thanks for reading, thanks for recent kind words, and take care, G. I don't think uh, Gray is the greatest guy. I don't think he's fully responsible for what occurred to Rooster Teeth. I don't think his statement's that great. I think he, if he really wanted to make that statement, first of all, I don't think he should have made that statement. I think that was a mistake. Uh, second of all, 
if he was going to make that statement, he probably should have focused more on the direct criticism he was receiving uh, regarding the, you know, the crunch time, the animation department. He mentioned the animation department briefly, wishing him the best and a little, you know, more than that. But he didn't mention the crunch time stuff. I think if he really wanted people to take his uh, statement seriously, he should have acknowledged some of these more serious claims being leveled against him and not just tried to paint it out like he did behind the scenes, all this good stuff that we don't know about. Uh, you know, I don't want to repeat myself. I already explained my issues uh, as we went through that. And to be fair, I also complimented the post where I thought praise was worth giving. So that's my take on that. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, I'll just reiterate, I don't think Gray should be held solely responsible for all of this stuff. And the people that are holding him solely responsible, it's absolutely unfair. Um, and it, it comes off as very hollow to me. These people, they, they're in such denial that Rooster Teeth is not the company that they thought it was, that they will even put all the blame on Gray and turn on him just to be in denial about Rooster Teeth and more people with the company being at fault than just one guy. It's really a shame. And I feel for Gray on that note at the same time. Um, you know, you got to take responsibility for your actions. All I know is, well, I don't want to get into too much stuff. Let me also mention Gray has me blocked on Twitter. That was weird. Like literally a day or a few days after I made my theory video, those two months ago, suddenly found myself blocked on Twitter. If I recall, that's around how that went down. That was weird. And that made me even more suspicious of Gray. Like if I made that theory video and you block me after... Seems like something is trying to be brushed under the rug or you're hiding something. But even so, I can sit here being blocked by the guy. The guy probably despises me. Even so, I will sit here and say it's not fair to put all the blame on him. At the same time, I think I made my criticism quite fair in this video and others where I discussed similar topics of RT, Gray, etc, etc. So let's finish this video up. For the Ruby video regarding the Ruby Rewind host Ellie leaving Rooster Teeth. I got some shout outs, but that video only came out an hour ago. So probably missing some people here. But those of you who promote the video and I don't shout out in this one, I truly appreciate the support. And you are definitely helping the channel. So thank you for that. But in the meantime, we have Brianna Jewel Reed, Coden X, DXDKJ Ambipath Studios, Skella Kitty, and 13th Honey Badger. <laughs> I never want to say the end of your name, Honey Badger, because I feel like the algorithm wouldn't like that one for some reason. I don't know. I have no idea. Anyways, guys, that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.